So welcome everybody to the BioXL webinar. This webinar is number 61. And uh, it's a pleasure, with pleasure, we, we host Paul Bauer, that is the Gromax Developer Manager, and he will tell us what is new in Gromax 2022. I'm hosting this webinar for BioXL and Alessandra Villa, and I work on the Royal Institute of Technology, and with me it's Arno Prun from the University of Edinburgh. So Paul has done his PhD in Uppsala University, and he was working on computational enzymology in, in the group of Lynn Kamerlin in trying to understand more enzyme, enzyme, enzyme catalysis. Then, and there he was start to work in an house simulation engine. Then in, uh, he moved to the group of Eric Linda, where was, he was both a, a scientific programmer and a researcher. And in 2019, he took over the position of Gromax Development Manager. And since there, he has focused in on smooth running the project, as well as implementing new features to enhance the usability of Gromax. Now, I will give the word to Paul. Thank you, Alessandra. So I'm just going to start sharing the presentation now. Great. Okay. I hope everyone can see the slides. and. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today for this, I hope fully an informative overview about what has changed with the newest version of Gromax, the 2022 release. And yeah, gonna tell you what kind of new features we have implemented, what other things we have been working on. And I hope I can also give you a taste of what new uh, interesting science you can do with this version. Just quickly, I hope everyone here knows we use Gromax to do biomolecular simulations, but not just biomolecular simulations, but basically everything you can simulate, uh, you can describe with a pairwise potential between entities, particles, whatever you want to call them. With the most practical showcase here in this figure that I always like using that just shows a um, transmembrane receptor in a, in a simulation box with different kind of solutes and the uh, lipid bilayer that it is embedded in all simulated at atom atomistic detail and running very efficiently on all kinds of different hardwares. If you're interested in talking about comics, if you have questions and want to know uh, announcement about new things that we've been working on, I highly, really recommend that you join our user forum at gomexbiot.eu. There you get all the announcement about uh, new things we have been working on when new, new version is released, when patches are released. And you have the community there that will help you, hopefully be able to help you with answering questions that you have when it comes to usability, when you get an error or the program does something that you didn't <coughs> think it should be doing. We also have a part there where you can find third party uh, tools and extensions to Gromax, for example, new force fields that we don't ship with our, number, with our main version, or data analysis methods that we don't have included, but that other people have found useful. So please go there. And maybe you will also see me answering some of your questions when I find time to do that. Also, if you really want to know everything, what is new in the newest version, I just recommend that you go to our online documentation where you find all the documentation for this version and all the previous versions that we have there. Everything I'm gonna to mention today is mentioned there as well in the release notes. So if you just want to read about it, then I recommend you switch off now and go to the link I have here, but I will, hopefully give some more context to some of the things we have been working on other than the rather dry summaries we have in the release notes for it. Uh, you can also learn about the previous uh, changes we had with the 2021 version and 2020 version in the respective webinars for them. Where I've been talking about the uh, development for the for in the previous years. But enough about this, let's go right to that. Uh, this version is, has been released just about two weeks ago, and we are planning to have a few 
patch releases on it for hopefully fixing bugs and getting them out to the fixes out to the users as soon as possible. With this release, I also want to remind everyone that the previous 2021 release is now just an extended maintenance so that we are not going to fix a minor bug there that, for example, affect data analysis tools. We are going to fix anything that affects the uh, simulation correctness. So if you find a physics breaking bug, we are definitely going to fix it and include it in the um, hopefully last patch release for this um, bench in uh, July or August. We do this so we can focus our effort on keeping the current, re current re uh, release as uh, stable as possible and fix everything we find there and to also be able to focus on the development for next year's version that is supposed to be released also uh, beginning of February 2023 or slightly after, depending on how well things are going in the end with our development. As a second note, this means that for 2020, 2020 version, there are not gonna be any more patch releases. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I made the final re patch release there for 2020.7. So this is going to be the final version of that release branch. The new things we have in 2022 are several, but depending on what uh, your interests are, maybe some people are going to be more interested in just listening to a collection of music we have from uh, our cool quotes list. And someone made a playlist of all the songs we have in the Gromax cool quotes that you hopefully get after every time you run the Gromax command. And if you want to listen to something while doing data analysis or while your simulation is running, check it out. I have heard it's supposed to be quite okay. But we also have been doing some actual work, and this includes a lot of work on under the hood that you hopefully won't have to interact with, but will affect how your simulations are running and how fast they're running. This includes that we Speed has sped up the calculation of the free energy uh, kernels and the free energy functions a lot by doing a lot of code maintenance so we can use the same kind of acceleration that we use for the normal non bonding interactions there. The same kind of templating on uh, accelerated uh, Cindy kernels. And we also worked on improving the control you have over free energy transformation pathways with uh, a new implementation of soft core interactions between particles when you appear or disappear particles or change their Van der Waals parameters. This will hopefully make it much more stable to run this kind of transform transformation reactions or simulations. Because there could have been issues before with the previous implementation. Again, this is something you shouldn't really notice. It should just look. If it doesn't, then it's something you need to fix. When it comes to new features, we have implemented the ability to use transformation core coordinates, something I'm going to go into more detail on the next slide, as well as a new interface for running quantum mechanic, molecular mechanic hybrid simulations with the CPK package. And we have worked a lot on the uh, accelerator support. That means you can use different um, acceleration devices, AKA graphics cards, with uh, different frameworks to actually offload the um, calculations to those devices. And we'll also go in a bit more detail in this later, later part of the uh, presentation. Now, what is the main, main need of this release? The first thing is really the implementation of transformation reaction or core coordinates. Basically what you could do before for uh, pulling particles or applying forces to a different part of the simulation was relatively limited to a few defined uh, mathematical interactions. They could do distance-based pulling, you could do angle-based pulling, but not that much else. And that was very limiting, so you were not able to do all the kinds of simulations you are probably interested in and had to use external packages like patching grommets with plumes or using party extensions, for example, with Cobos. We have been working on this to improve this, and one of the improvements is the transformation core coordinate implementation. We can use any mathematical uh, transformation that you can think of 
can, you can apply to a set of particles. So for anything that you can think of um, mathematical formula, any kind of interaction, you can pass this to Gromitz and we will use this to calculate forces between particles for all kinds of linear, nonlinear com combinations of uh, functions, uh, different functional types, any kind of weird angle distance combination interaction, basically everything you can think of or not think of. And I hope this will include improve the usability of formats dramatically for calculating different reaction profiles or investigating behavior of systems that you have previously limited of by, the, by our implementation. I don't think it will completely remove the need for some of the advanced features you have, for example, in Plumed, but I'm hopeful that we will at least make it possible for some users of the external patches to use our main endpoint because with this, they will be able to use all of the um, features we have when it comes to offloading simulation to accelerators because this is fully, uh, fully um, implemented in our code and fully integrated. So it should just work, you could, should just be able to use your mathematical expression for, your, for, your, for the force you want to uh, apply, run garments with it, and everything, but everything should be done automatically under the hood. There may be still some issues because this was a major effort to get this in. So please try it out and let us know if something doesn't work or something works in a way that you couldn't expect. But I hope this will enable a lot of new, a lot of new and interesting science that can be done in this realm of similar simulations. The second major addition to the code that has been in the book for several years and has now finally come to fruition is a new interface, as I said, for quantum mechanics, molecular mechanics, hybrid simulation with the CP2K package. For this. We have been working on uh, our collaborators in Finland at University of Yaraskala to make it possible to just do a standard NV simulation setup where you use your protein structure that you want to simulate here as example of the fluorescence protein. You apply, use your normal molecular dynamics topology parameters, whatever, to solve the system and generate an input. And then you add to this a description of your QMM setup again. Gramax automates a lot of this and gives you a range of different settings that are known to work in interfacing with CP2K. And then you just run it in a version of Gramax that is uh, coupled to the CP2K package and it will do its job and you will get a quantum mechanically hybrid, molecular mechanical hybrid, hybrid description of your system and will hopefully be, study, be able to study a lot of very interesting science in the realm of uh, catalysis or fluorescence behavior, anything again you can think of in the, that is lived, that is something that you can only study with QM and where molecular mechanics is limiting. This is actually a feature that I myself am very happy that we have it finally integrated because I'm coming from this one. And being able to do this now with Gromax is very exciting because I hope that people will be able to use the computational power of comments to apply this to more and more interesting and larger systems. There are still some limitations of this because we were more interested in getting it actually stable and safe that people can be sure that the inputs Gromax generates are accepted by CP2K and work well with Gromax. But the plan is to extend it to be fully flexible in generating those inputs so that any kind of QMM simulation that is possible with the asymmetric the QM part of CP2K can be done with Gromax and this interface. A very interesting and exciting example that has already been done by our, again, our Finnish collaborators is actually using basically all the new features together with one of the main features in Gromax, the accelerated weight histogram method, WH, to simulate an enzyme reaction in uh, SARS CoV-2. I think it's a phosphodiesterase, but I would need to check again because I don't want to say anything wrong. And this combines both the QMM interface running a 
here in MM simulation using transformation pool coordinates to describe the reaction coordinates, that is the breaking and forming bonds in the, during the reaction in the system, and AWH to sample the uh, surface of the reaction coordinate exhaustively and very efficiently. So I didn't put more information on the slide because I think this is about as beautiful as it can get, but uh, the uh, tests that our collaborators have finally shown that it's not just more it's not just easy to use this in Dromax, it's also way more efficient using this combination of QMMM transformation co coordinate and AWH than using standard umbrella something to exhaustively sample the full reaction coordinate that is going on here. So one of the advantages of AWH, as I hope at least some of you know, because we have this had this for quite a while now, is that you can distribute the sampling of the reaction coordinate to several independent simulations that all independently sample the surface that you're interested in, and then are able to share this information in between to make sure that they explore the reaction the surface the reaction surface to parts that haven't been completely sampled yet, which makes it way more efficient than using standard umbrella sampling simulations where you are limited to a set window of um, for example, distance coordinates here that describe the forming and breaking bonds and are not always able to fully sample the regions that you're interested in. And the plot shows this quite well because with AWH, you get a very smooth reaction profile with a very well defined transition state. Everything well, umbrella sampling gets the same overall plot, but uh, shows that there are still some regions that probably would need more sampling and that are not as accurately, accurately described. And yeah, as I said, this doesn't include the performance data, but with AWH, you're able to achieve this kind of accuracy that you're interested in in your simulation to understand this way faster than in other ways. So again, I hope people will find this useful and will try this out. And if they find bugs, they let us know. But we hope this will allow many, many new interesting scientific studies done with Romax and help the yeah, groups that want to do, do this doing it easily and efficiently. Now, a bit of back from methods, we're going to go to actually hardware support and where you can run Romax efficiently on what kind of hardware. As was mentioned already a year ago when we had the webinar for 2021, uh, we said that we have been working on adding the SQL, uh, adding offloading to uh, Intel devices using the uh, SQL standard to Gromax. And we have been, we had this already implemented back then, but mostly just in the way to see that uh, we can do it and not fully supported in the main, main release. During the last year, we have been very busy, the GPU people and our team have been extremely busy trying to extend the support for SQL and making sure it works well on different devices, different implementations, and being able to accelerate the calculations of more interaction types. And it has been very successful. We have now extended the support that we had with uh, open, the deprecated OpenCL implementation on AMD and Intel devices to more interactions that hadn't been able to be calculated before on accelerated devices. But uh, we are still not there that we support, the, um, support all interaction types that we have support for with NVIDIA devices using CUDA. This is because it's not an easy task, not just in uh, adding new implementations for the actual calculation kernels, but also making sure that it works well with all kinds of calculations that are done in Gromax and that we use the correct calculation paths and um, the correct way to actually communicate with between devices and uh, cal what calculation should be done on those devices. So this is something we are currently working on to get better hardware support for uh, better hardware support, for example, Intel devices. But it will likely be already 
available for the Comax 2023 and hopefully maybe before as part of making making possible to use Comax on the new big supercomputer resources that are currently being implemented in Sweden, especially in the probably in, uh, especially interesting for people in Sweden that will have access to the to those supercomputers. Also to others that want to just use to use their graphics cards and their machines in their, uh, their workstations to run accelerate performance calculations. Another thing we have been working on and got extended is the ability to directly communicate between uh, CUDA devices and running simulations on multiple GPUs. This has previously been possible just when you use the internal Gromax Track MPI threading library. It's also now possible to do this with uh, regular MPI. I had to make the decision there to not have this available by default just before the release because I wasn't completely convinced that we got it completely right in all cases. It is possible to use this by using the environmental flags that they are already there in 2021 and that are documented in our guides for getting good performance from from Gromax when using CUDA devices, CUDA NVIDIA devices, and uh, a Gromax compiled compiled with CUDA, CUDA support. Again, people that are interested in using this, I highly recommend you try it out, but you have to be very careful and please let us know if you run into anything that is unexpected there, unexpected simulation behavior or bugs that you encounter because then we need to fix them as soon as possible so that we can enable this for the next release or maybe as part of a patch release for Gromax 2022. One more thing when it comes to Sickle, is that we now not just support the Intel 1 MPI implementation of the SQL standard, but also the HIPSQL implementation. And using both of those, we are now able to target devices from all of the big uh, GPU vendors, NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel for upload floating. We used, um, we decided on going this way to support new AMD devices because it is more sustainable for us to continue working on one major interface for accelerators using SQL instead of trying to support individual interfaces, for example, the, the CUDA implementation, SQL implementation for Intel, and the HIP implementation that would also be possible for AMD. So we decided going with that and we hope it will work fine for everyone that uses it. Again, this is partially experimental still. It will work. You will be able to get the working Gromax version compiled either with one API cycle or HIP cycle. But I would ask you to again be careful when using those accelerate, uh, using those for accelerating your simulations. And let us know if anything doesn't work or doesn't behave as you think it should. In other news, there is a new site for people that actually want to learn how to use Gromax, so back to usability. And that's tutorials, Gromax.org, where you can find some introduction, introduction to it, but also tutorials for more advanced methods in Gromax that will not just, hopefully not just give you an introduction to what you're doing in the simulation, but also give you an idea how it works under the hood and what you can do to more precisely target the problem you're interested in. So I would recommend that you have a look there. You can run most of those tutorials in on your own in the browser using the uh, my, my, my binder page that is linked here. Or you can just download them to your workstation or your laptop if you want to just run from there and have a look. Those tutorials have been developed in collaboration with ENCCS in Sweden. So thanks for the efforts in getting this done. I just want to note that those tutorials are not meant as a replacement for the awesome tutorials done by Justin Lemko that has have taught me how to use Gromax and I think most of the people have had at least some knowledge of them. So if you want to learn how to use Gromax, use either of them, maybe both. I think that's the best way. 
we have out tools because then we are able to always make sure that they work with our latest version that we keep them continuously updated and that new features get tested and explained to users there where we have control over them. Another interesting thing that is coming hopefully soon within the next few weeks is that we're going to have a replacement for our web page that I'm not sure how many people actually go to gromax.org and see the uh, very old web page that we have. But we are, have been working on getting this updated. So we actually have recent and not completely outdated information there and are able to access all of the uh, materials we have on our other sites directly from the web page without having to go through three hoops to actually find which page is the correct one and which is outdated. So I am very excited to actually get the get this done as well, so that users that are interested in Gromax will have a nice entry point into where to start their simulation career or where they can start learning how to contribute to Gromax if they're interested in this. And contributions of there are, of course, always very welcome. So we can continue working on new things. Now, there's also some Los Angeles information uh, that doesn't really belong in any of the other categories. One of them is, again, something you're probably not going to be affected with directly, but it's very exciting for us that we have extended the uh, re-implementation of a lot of our Kegler, um, force corners and put force corners for non-bonded and listed forces, so bonded angle dihedral calculations with the NBLIP team. And we are hoping to continue this so we can actually move the calculations done in Gromax to this format because it will help us both in confirming accuracy of our calculations and also making it easier to extend it to new formats in the future. So hope you can stay tuned there for more exciting news. But right now, that's something you're probably not going to get directly affected. If you're not interested in writing your own simulation in, in, engine, for example, then have a look at NBLIP and maybe it's useful for you as well. The GOMAX uh, Python API, GMAX API, has also been extended. Again, that's not some so much new things you will probably see directly when, uh, trying, when, when using it or when trying to use it with something that you're interested in doing. I hope everyone has heard about it by now because I think being able to control GOMAX simulations directly from Python using this API, able to set up simulation workflows, controlling data input or modifying some of our one, one control parameters directly from Python and very efficiently is something that is very exciting for me as from a usability point of, point of view and will hopefully make running simulations much easier for the average user for, and scripting also making it possible to script a complete simulation setup efficiently. Now, just a few gotchas to people that probably maybe not that um, well versed with reading our release notes. If you have used AWH and have been using cover diameters for angles and wondered why it's everything else in Gromax is always in degrees and this was in radians, yeah, we moved this now to also use degrees as everything else to be consistent. This just means if you're trying to set up new simulations with the new version, don't be confused if this now also has to be in, be in degrees and make sure it is. Uh, this doesn't affect any old simulations. We are checking this automatically so that everything under the hood gets actually converted to the right unit. Another thing that is, I think, very interesting, I hope for many people, is that our simulation setup engine GOMP is now a lot faster for not just for some force fields when setting up and run inputs, but for all basically all of them. I hope that you won't be much interested in that other than, oh yeah, it's faster now because it has been a bottleneck and we have been trying to improve this. Uh, trying, we are trying to improve this further so that Grump becomes less and less of a bottleneck when actually setting up simulations. 
Also, when it comes to usability there, we have been trying to make one more expressive when it comes to um, invalid simulation setups or simulation setups that could lead to invalid physics. So there are more warnings now. This not just includes the exclusion process here, but also some combinations of coupling algorithms. So if you were a dedicated user of the variance in thermostat and virostat, Grump will not tell you that this is a very bad idea and will not let you want to set up a simulation if you're not very, if you're not telling it explicitly that you want to do this. And we're also moving to the point now that Grump does not modify what you're defining in your one input. We want to get to the point that everything you set as a one input information is something Grumax will always take as it is, even if it's not efficient or can be may lead to issues, but is resulting in a valid simulation. So this is ongoing work, but we hope that with, with this, it will be more understandable also for people that use, use Gromax that, for example, a setting that they have is will be accepted and will be used, but Gromp will tell them that it's likely not the most efficient way to do things. You can't, of course, just add features to Gromax. Sometimes you also need to be able to remove things or make sure that um, features that don't work well are deprecated. As noted in last this webinar with the deprecation list, we have now removed the ability to build just a new one for Gromax because the need for this has been long time removed with the addition of the GeneX wrapper binary. And there wasn't really any logic behind just having an MD1 executable or a GMAX wrapper binary executable, because you can always run MD1 from the GMAX wrapper. And this made our life actually much easier when it comes to development. So we had to get, get rid of this. Another thing, if you have been trying to run GMAX on 32 bit platforms, I have to be very sorry and say that the official support for them has been removed together with. A lot of the SIMD acceleration that we had for those kinds of platforms. You will still be able to you to build Gromax on this platform forms. It may still work perfectly fine, but we can't guarantee this because we don't have the ability to test it ourselves. Those platforms are not really useful in high performance computing anymore. And being able to work exclusively with 64 bit platforms makes our life much easier. Again, if you're affected by this, then you can, of course, that fire if things are working. If not, yeah, I'm sorry. We have to focus our development efforts on this. Another maybe minor thing for people that do the statistical analysis method, if you use the outdated uh, analysis input files, uh, yeah, we remove this again to make our life easier. Those files have from a version, I think, 15 years ago. So please use something more modern. If you need to be able to still analyze those files, you're always, you can always use an only version of comments. There it is still perfectly fine. For the next development cycle, there are probably going, there's going to be a few things we're going to remove. One of them is the internal molecular, molecular view, GMX view. This tool, has not seen any development, and there have been so many very well developed external tools to actually visualize molecular structures available for many, many years. So we decided that we will not try to compete with them and instead that we could please use one of the properly uh, maintained molecular viewers. So we can remove GMX view and again focus our efforts on other things. The same goes for the analysis tool with GMX uh, Chai. I, I don't really know myself what this tool has been used for. And again, it has been not developed and deprecated and not used for extensively for many years. So we want to ask people if they want to do data analysis that was possible with this tool, use an external tool. It will probably do things better than our own implementation. Another thing that is probably more important for people that use Gromax exclusively for data analysis, you will now need to be able to supply a one input file that has the correct masses and atomic radii for particles for some analysis tools, because we will remove the ability to 
deduce those parameters from the atomic names. This will make the tools much more robust because we will always be, they, they can always assert that they have the correct inputs there. Yeah? And it will make all that easier because we don't need to maintain a probably always, always outdated list of um, deduction rules that deciding which atom corresponds to which mass and different radii. Uh, I hope that won't affect too many people, but it's uh, something again that is important for usability of it, all the tools that rely on it. Of course, we're not just maintaining things, we also have a lot of interesting plans for the next development cycle, and people are already actively working on this, both here in Stockholm and all of our external collaborators. One of the main things that we want to be able to enable, able to enable is that you can use GPU direct communication between multiple accelerator devices for all accelerators and all acceleration frameworks that we're actively developing. So meaning CUDA and SICL by default. And then this will hopefully lead to um, impressive improvement in performance as we have seen for CUDA devices. We have postponed this, as I said before, because we need to make sure that this works reliable on all simulation setups and with all run inputs that are supposed to support this. Of course, that's difficult because it's a lot of different code paths we, can, we have to validate, but this is one of the goals we have. So that with the next version, performance performance will be even better. An additional target for a new or basic thing that we want to improve with the next release and want to extend usability is the multiple time stepping implementation that we have in Gromax. Right now, uh, it works quite well, but not uh, again when you want to use accelerators to offer some of the calculations to, to them, because it's again a difficult problem trying to do this correctly with making sure that correct calculations are done at the correct time and the data from those calculations are available for further calculations um, at the correct time. So this is not something that should affect how people are running simulation, it's just it should be able to run more kinds of simulations with more to time stepping and efficient um, acceleration, accelerator offload. And the other thing that has been under semi-active development for a long time, but we are hoping to get done for the next release is that we change input file reading to using modern file formats where we can validate in inputs already on the file format level and don't have to run a complete file through GRUMP before making sure, realizing, oh yeah, a, a section was missing here. That is important, so you need to start again and Maybe after you have already waited for GOMP to process your 5 million atom system, that's not a good thing. So again, stay tuned. I hope this is something I can talk in more details when we come to the next release webinar in about a year. One more major feature that has been under development and that we are working on integrating is a new constant pH lambda dynamics implementation that has been worked on by, again, our collaborators in Finland that has been already published as a preprint. So if you're interested in this, I recommend you have a look at this. And we hope to get this integrated properly in Gromax and available for all kinds of simulations and all kinds of weird problems you want to start with with the next version. This is a major effort, so I can't promise it will go into the next release, but we are just hoping and working very hard to make making this a reality because the amount of different essential problems you can then study just increases dramatically. And one more thing that is important for people that want to develop their own tools that work together with Gromax or want to use Gromax as a library, we are working on providing better interoperability with external tools for uh, new to the API, Gromax API. And we're hoping that with beginning with the next version, we'll be able to provide a stable API that you can use to develop your tools again. 
your tools against Formex so that you don't need to adapt to our whims of changes to the uh, current uh, API that we're having. Yes. So, of course, this is not something that is done by a few people, but uh, we have a very large team that work on our on Gromax, both here in Stockholm, other parts of Sweden, and all over the world. I'm not going to read the names here because it would take a lot of useful time. I actually want to leave for answering your questions and maybe having some discussion. But uh, when you use uh, the new Gromax version, then think and please thank the people that have been working on it because this has been, again, major effort and a lot of work for every one of us. And I want to thank you for your attention. I hope this has been interesting for you and I'm waiting for your questions. Okay, Paul, thank you very much. Very interesting, very good to have this overview. Um, so we do have a number of questions already. For anybody who's not yet asked your question, you can use the uh, Q&A functionality to ask your question and I will read it aloud um, and uh, Paul will answer. So with the first question is uh, from Anita asking, uh, for any particular year's Chromex version, is it best to switch to the last version of that year, for example, 2021.6, as it becomes available to avoid bugs related to the physics itself? Yes, so um, you should not switch major versions for a particular study. There, I would recommend you stay, for example, the 2021 bunch. But you should try to use the latest patch release because there are, we don't do those for fun. We actually, every one of them fixes some kind of bug that is hopefully, uh, and uh, this fixes hopefully happen people who have been running into this bug before. You should check the release notes to see if there's anything affecting you. But in general, I think it's best practice to keep on the latest um, version of a particular release branch. Okay, now we have a few questions that are all about uh, the QMM interface. I think I could have a stab at answering some of them and I might be able to share something useful if I share a screen as well. Um, so shall we do that? And then you can you can also jump in if there's anything that you want to add. That's of okay. course, and then when you, if you want to go back to the presentation, yeah, I can just share it. Yes. Okay, so the first question that we have, I will share the screen. Um, uh, the first question we have is, does Chromex add the uh, link atoms automatically for the CP2K QM setup? Now, I think, and you might correct me, uh, Paul, I think that with a new version, I, with this release version, mm -hmm. the interface does yes, do that. Yes, it does. Yeah, it automatically generates your valid inputs, so you don't have to do those things manually. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, and then the next question about QMM is, do you have a tutorial where we can try this QMM with CP2K out? I'm not sure yeah. if we have an official yes. Gromix tutorial for this yet, Alessandro, but... I can, I can share, yes, yeah, so I'll share, I'll indeed share as I said I would, um, which is that if, if people go to uh, GitHub, uh, BioXL GitHub, so github.com slash BioXL, and if they search for in the repositories, they search for CP2K, you'll find a number of uh, tutorials uh, that were developed for the interface, wherever it says Chromax and CP2K. The most recent ones will be for more recent versions of the interface. And I suspect that's, that this most recent one that's shown here, which was used in a recent workshop uh, in February, uh, was probably used in Chromax 2022. Um, but maybe no maybe not okay but um no that tutorial is a special tutorial that was developed for a workshop in finland yeah. and where dimitri is uh, combine uh, cp2k with awh right yes so that is a special tutorial yeah. and that uh, i mean people this are actually looks... but those tutorial mm. as paul was say they are not uh, the yeah they are in bioxel repository and they are not up to now. I don't know how much they are on the use of everybody. I mean, they can use, but they have to have an, you have to have some resource to be able to run that. So that is true. Was, and, that's and what the, uh, I was meaning. While that is the main difference, while the tutorial that Paul was presenting, 
are just to avoid confusion, you can just run directly using my binder that yes. I just mentioned to avoid confusion. Yes, so uh, if we don't have an official Gromax tutorial for the firmware -Man interface yet, but I think this is probably going to be added at some point in the future. I think the point about the resource is a very important one to make because, I mean, uh, some of these uh, runs with CP2K can use a lot of resources, um, especially if you have a lot of a lot of QM atoms. So actually, that brings me on to another possibility that people can can use is that there is uh, so so I'm based in University of Edinburgh and we host an, a, a, an HPC machine uh, called Archer Two and uh, we actually uh, run a. Um, a self-service course based on the course that BioXL ran using uh, Gromax together with CP2K. And anybody uh, can sign up for this and it gives you access to the, to the machine uh, to use you know, sufficient resources to be able to run uh, the, the associated tutorial. So if you were to register, if you were to find this, you can register for this and uh, you will get an account on the machine and you'll be able to to run this and this this uses perhaps a slightly older version of the interface but it will get you familiar with it there are associated recordings that have uh, advice from uh, dimitri and other colleagues about uh, some, some some tips um so that's that's also an option uh, but yet yeah, indeed the difference is, is you cannot you, you need access to some amount of resources um to be able to to run this okay um so then the next question is, what is the performance of the new Gromax CP2K QMM compared to the QMM imp implementation in CP2K itself? Uh, so the performance itself uh, within Gromax, you can, everything when it comes to the molecular mechanics part, this is done by our highly optimized uh, calculation routines that we have for this. So I, I'm not sure how performant the QMM implementation CP2K is itself. So yeah, but I think I would I would hazard a guess that Gromax is faster for the MM part. If yes. you have a large MM system, it's very likely more efficient to use Gromax to run this. Yes. Uh, so I think look, having looked at the systematic benchmarking of this, that's certainly true. Um, but essentially, the, the the main bottleneck in the amount of compute time spent on the QM part is is much more than the MM part. So uh, so indeed, it's it's it's. Essentially, what it, what Gromax is doing is just calling out to CP2K to do the QMM uh, computation, um, so the solve within the QM region and also uh, the QMMM coupling. Uh, so that's literally directly using CP2K's own uh, subroutines for that. So the, the I guess the answer to the question is how similar is the performance? It's 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 very similar to to CP2K's own QMM performance simply because. The MM the part, part is relative. Yes, exactly. The QM part, the QMMM part, uh, QM and QMMM parts dominate. So. But yeah, if you have a very large system and small QM region, then Gromax would be faster. Well, that's a point of difference. I think that's probably right. So we have a few other questions, but perhaps it's useful that I stop. They're not about QMM. So maybe mm -hmm. I should stop sharing screen and you could share your presentation. Yes, I will again. share again. So the next question is, uh, cur curious about the implementation of constant pH molecular dynamics in Gromex. Has that been implemented and how can users try this out? So right now, as I said, there is a preprint out for this, but the implementation itself is, has not been made public. But that's, I've been involved, in, involved in it and we are hoping to have this uh, avail available to people who want to try out relatively soon. But just a note of caution that, of course, it's not up to the standards we have in core Gromax. And that there will be, uh, if when we have this released as part of main Gromax when it's done, it's likely maybe going to be a bit different to what is going to be released there. So I actually have to ask you to be patient until this is available. I'm sorry. Okay. And then there's a question, is there any plan to bring back support for simulations without periodic bond conditions? This is something we are looking at. The problem is that those relied on the group screen that we removed about a few years ago. And the um, work on this has not been uh, that intensive to try to bring some of the deprecated the removed functionality back, but we are working on it. So. Again, please be patient. 
okay, thank you. Next one is, which flaws could arise from usage of the flags GMX GPU DD comms and GMX GPU PME PP comms? Does it only affect the stability or performance of the simulation run, or could uh, it also affect the correctness of the simulation? That, that is what we. That is actually the reason why I decided not to have this enabled by default. But you have to use the environment flag because we cannot fully guarantee that you have that there are no correctness issues with this. And we had some just before the release. We had I found one bug that actually influenced the stability of the simulation as well that was related to the way this communication actually happens on between G, the, the GPUs. That was a very minor edge case, and it should not affect people that use normal kind of simulation setups. But that's something we need to be able to account for. So it may be that you never run into any issues, because we know that our collaborators from NVIDIA that have been contributing this code have been using it extensively for production simulations and they haven't run into issues there. But we cannot guarantee it. And that's for me, I want to ensure that the Gromix version you get uh, something that is enabled by default is not allowed to fail. Thank you, makes sense. Uh, then what are the plans for non-default, non-bonded interactions? Tables are currently not supported. Yes, and I, I expected this question. So. The table support is something we have been trying to get back into Gromax now since the day that we actually removed them. But this is, it's not as easy as people may think to actually get this back into the code because, again, the old code relied on the group, group scheme kernels that have been removed and getting it done reliably for the developer kernels that we're now using to crack the normal interaction is a difficult undertaking. But I hope that we can get this done this year because it has been a long time and we need this kind of ability so people can use more flexible interaction types for the system. And it's a major feature that we can be missing. Okay, thank you. We have only one final question, which is something that uh, uh, I could probably tackle about GPU version of Chromex with CP2K. So asking, somebody's asking how good, and I presume that means how fast will be the GPU version of Chromex with CP2K compared with the CPU only version of Chromex with CP2K. Obviously Chromex is great with GPUs, uh, but since these QMM yeah. calculations are dominated by the QM part, the QMM part yeah. is CP2K, the so... question, uh, the question is really what is the uh, weight limit in uh, part of the uh, simulation step there? And oh, if you're not having a giant system that is millions of atoms per, compared to a very small QM region, I don't think you're going to see much improvement between the CPU and the GPU version of Domex. I'm not sure how well the CP2K runs with GPU, it depends on your offload speculation to the GPU. It can, it's but it's. Development. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can, but it's often it's often not necessarily beneficial, and especially the relatively small numbers of QM atoms that you might tackle in a in a QMM approach for biomolecules. Um, we've not seen uh, evidence for a strong benefit from use of GPU offloading in combined Chromex CPTK calculations, um, uh, because simply because it's it's just not as as efficient as as Chromex is for the particular part of the calculation that it's trying to do. Um, so I think that's I think that's all the questions. There are a lot of people saying thanks as well. So thanks is really great. So really appreciate uh, that, that overview and talk and answering all these questions. So um, Alessandra, do you want to round off? We will have a and the next webinar will be given by Silar Paul, and he will speak about improvement in the Gromax heterogeneous parallelization, and it will be the fifth of April. So I hope to see you in. Uh, almost one month. So we have a little break uh, in the webinar. And then after this webinar, we will have a series of webinars that will address all the use case that has been run in BioXL, but more information will become yeah. later. And I highly recommend people actually join in if they want to know more about the um, ability to run Gromax efficiently on accelerator hardware with different one setups because so it will be able to tell you exactly how to do the most efficient simulation there. Okay, 
I thank you, Paul, for the participation. In particular, I also thanks everybody, all the participants, for being active and asking questions. I see you in a while. Bye bye.